SmartSuite keeps rolling out with features faster than we can even create videos on them. So in this video, we're going to cover many of the newest features that SmartSuite has implemented. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and we help companies like yours build apps, portals, and integrations to your business applications. So first off, let's cover the new automation features inside of SmartSuite. The first one we're going to talk about here is being able to use the Find Records action and actually find a single record. And now we can use the outputs from that in other steps in our automation. So let's take a look at this. Maybe we say a new lead record comes in, a new contacts created, and we wanna find the right sales rep or someone for this. In this case, we're using this find a single record. So you can click between these two options, multiple records or a single record. And if it's a single record, then we can use the output for that. So we're finding a sales rep based off of some criteria that we're looking for. Now, later on, if we're trying to update then the contacts for this, what you could do is if we want to say fields to update, let's choose our assigned to. So in the past, we always had access to be able to update things dynamically from the trigger. But now if you go back, we can see that we also have additional options. We can see find one record in the sales reps. So that's that previous action. So if we're finding one record, now we get access to those values from that find one record action step. Now, the next feature related to automations is that we can actually take those values and instead of just replacing them all the time, we have some additional options. So in the past, we'd be replacing values, but now you'll see there's an additional option to clear a value. You could say, we're gonna actually start this from scratch. We're gonna clear it out instead of replacing the value. And there's also another option for certain field types. If you have something like linked records here, let's take a look at this maybe for former companies. We could update this value instead of replace and clear, you could also append, which would mean you could take other linked records and just add it into the list. There was a way to do this before, but it was a little bit tricky. It didn't quite make sense. You had to choose the previous value and then add a comma and then add the other value. This is so much easier now that we can replace clear and now append those values. Well, now let's say in this lead flow example that we assign the lead and we want to increment some sort of a counter for that sales rep to say, okay, well, they got the last lead. Let's go round robin and find the next sales rep instead. So let's update our records here and we're gonna update the sales rep that we found in that previous step. So we'll do this based on that find one record. And now when we update a field, let's search for our lead counter that we have. And we could now increment this value instead of just replace, we now have these math operations. So we could add, subtract, multiply, and divide directly in here. This is a little bit different than Airtable where Airtable, you have to depend a lot on formula fields. You can't actually make any calculations directly in the application. Now we could just say, hey, we want to increment this. We could put in a static value. In this case, we would just say add one to that value and that's our new value. But you could also do more complex things. You could add, other values that we're pulling from the trigger. Maybe you have an inventory management use case and you want to be able to decrement inventory from your inventory on hand. That's something that you could do with these math operators as well. Now, the last automation feature is that there's a new action to be able to merge records. This is really useful if you want to identify duplicates before they already muddy up your database. We've made a separate video on this as well that you can check out in our YouTube videos. So next up, we have a couple of features when it comes to managing your tables and views. When you're building a relatively complex solution inside of SmartSuite, oftentimes you're creating multiple junction tables tables that their whole purpose is really to connect two things. An example of this would be you have an invoice, you have products, and you have invoice lines that connect the invoice to those products. Well, in that case, oftentimes you don't actually really click into the table itself to manage those invoice lines. And maybe this is something that's really cluttering up the number of tables that you see across the top. So now you can click into a table and we can choose to hide that table. We'll get a little notification here. And now that has removed it from our tables list across the top, which really helps simplify this for us. If our users don't need to see it, then it won't have to be in the way. Now, if at any point we want to make that accessible again, we've got this little menu up here for table listing. We can expand it. And here you'll see these hidden tables. You can just click this icon to unhide table if you want to see that again. Now we've always had the ability to name our views. So we could say this is our current invoices, but now you have the ability to add a description as well. So based on our filtering, we might say these are current unpaid invoices for this quarter. 
And we could do this as a view name that actually shows up here or as a tooltip. Let's save that description so you can see when we actually have it here, it displays underneath, nice front and center to make that available. Or we could go back and edit that description and change it to be a tooltip. Now, if we hover here on the tooltip and click on this, we can see our current invoices and that description. Next, let's talk about updates to our records. Similar to our view descriptions, we can now add a description for any of the sections that we have. We also have the ability now to add a cover image. So I can come to our action menu in our record and go to page settings. Here I've got some options for page layouts. If I go to settings, this is where I can choose one of our files and attachments that we have. So this one I called company logo. If I click on that, that now displays in the upper left hand corner, the image that we've selected. So I'll X out of here. We now have access to that image. It can be expanded here. So this is great for things like logos, images of people, or maybe you have things like real estate and you wanna be able to show images up there. A nice little addition to be able to add some visual imagery to our records. Now, if you're anything like us, when we're working on our smart suite builds, we've often had these sections down at the bottom called extra fields or hidden or miscellaneous that we don't actually need to expose to the user. Maybe it's things that we have in the background or we click from a certain grid view, but we don't need it here. Well, instead of having this extra fields section and then leaving that collapsed by default, now we can actually change it so we don't have to view those extra fields at all. Again, go ahead and click on your action menu up top, go to page settings, go to fields, and this is where we could toggle these off so we could now hide them. They won't get in the way. We can delete that extra section so it really just cleans things up. Next, let's talk about some of the new functions available to us in SmartSuite formulas. So right now I have an accounts table and I have a related opportunities table. We're taking a look at this A&P Industries we can see that there are three different opportunities available for us. And in this first case, if we wanted to say, hey, what's the most recent opportunity that we had and the value of that opportunity? Let's go back into our accounts here. And this is where we're choosing on this recent opportunity value. I've created a formula. And here we're using this related record sort. So the value we want returned to us is the estimated value and we're sorting it based on the opportunity's actual close date. There is an option for additional parameter here where we can choose the sorting order, whether it's descending or ascending, but that's going to default to descending. So in this case, the example that we're taking a look at is saying, what is the value of that opportunity if we choose the most recent opportunity? And so this is where we could see our recent opportunity value is $20,000. Now we can go a step further. There's a pluralized version of this as well. So we could say related records. Notice the plural here. We could sort the records here. And this can actually return an array of these values. So instead of just returning the one record, we could say let's return that list or that array of records. So we're doing the same thing here. We're finding that estimated value, but we're sorting this based on the estimated value as well, as opposed to what we were doing in the previous step. Now, another new function here that I want to point out is this top function. So we could say instead of showing us the opportunity value of all of our opportunities, we just want to take the most recent two or the most recent five, the top X amount of records. So we're actually using the top in conjunction with the related records here. And then, of course, we need to use some sort of aggregator here like a sum. So in this case, we're saying, OK, of our last two opportunities, what is the total value of those opportunities. So now we're looking here at $200,000. If we go back to my opportunities and we take a look at those values, we can see we've got that 150,000 and 50,000, which add up to be that 200,000. Next up, we have the get list function. This is really powerful because it allows us to take our linked records, a group of linked records, and we can query them in different ways. It takes four different arguments. So we can give it a condition. Maybe we want it to be based on the status. We can tell it what field to return. Again, is this quantity or amount or something like that? We've got a field to sort by, which could be the order date, or we want it sorted by the largest to smallest opportunities. And then again, that sorting order. So this is kind of a combination of those other things. But what this really gets us closer to is being able to query data in our database. And so I'm really, really hoping someday in SmartSuite to have a query formula where we could take even unrelated records. So imagine you want to be able to aggregate data from different places in the system and have one table of KPIs, and you could just pull in that data as needed with an ad hoc query. That's my real goal, and this gets us a step closer 
to seeing that become a reality in Smart Suite. And the last formula piece here, I think is the most exciting because we're now able to take the different components or the nested fields or subfields of the time tracking log and use them in our formulas. Now, this is huge because we actually, as an organization, didn't have a lot of our clients using the time tracking log in the past because even though it was great from a UI perspective and really easy to be able to log your time, have multiple people log time, we couldn't actually extract the data very easily from that field. And so we were doing things outside of that time log and just manually entering time. Now, because we can access time, there are so many creative things we can do. Now inside of our formulas, if we have our time tracking log field, we can use that dot notation and this gives us access to the underlying fields, like the note that we've added, the reported by, this is the person who's actually doing that time entry, the reported on, what date did they enter that time, and we can have the actual amount of time that they reported. So huge shout out to Artem from SmartSuite who put together some really powerful examples. So if you are logging time on the tasks, just individual tasks and putting in your time entry there, now we could have a table that's actually tracking summaries of all of this. So we can see, here's our project, here's an individual employee on that project. Now we could have a field to say, how many hours are they tracking today? If we open up this formula here, we can use our new functionality of get list. And what we're doing is we're actually using the time tracking log and we can use that reported by to say, okay, if this matches that employee, then we want to report on the amount of time that they did today. So there's a lot of different use cases for this. I'm really excited to use it internally at Automation Helpers since we're delivering on projects for our clients. We're doing time entry and this now gives us a much better way to report. Finally, let's talk about some of the changes to fields that have been rolling out in SmartSuite. So one of the things we've been able to do for a while now is to have our different nested or sub fields and be able to edit them. So in this case, we're looking at an address field, which is actually comprised of multiple sub fields that go into that address. So here I have the ability to actually change the city value. And when I click off, this actually updates the overall address. So now if I'm on my contact record and we have a linked relationship between the contact and the account, and I want to say what city is this employee based in based on the company's city, what we can do is add a lookup field and we can now actually reference the subfields here. So I've got my company HQ address. I can expand this and actually reference that city itself. So here now we can display those different values. Along the same lines with subfields, now that we have our dependencies and we have our predecessors and successors, those can be split as well into the dependency predecessors and the dependency successors field. But now the new addition that we have is that these are actually editable. They behave very much like linked records. So we could press the plus button, we could start typing, we could select those records to now automatically turn them into predecessors and successors. And our last field feature, for those of you who have been using Smart Docs extensively, you're taking your team meeting notes and whatnot inside of Smart Docs, now you can take the values there and you can actually export that to PDF. So you can send that to PDF, you've got some configuration settings, you can export it, and now we have the ability to actually take those PDFs and send them to people over email, which for a lot of people really helps with that cross collaboration. I hope this was helpful to see the latest features inside of SmartSuite. If you have any questions about your own SmartSuite setup, don't hesitate to reach out to our website at automationhelpers.com where we're offering free 30 minute consultations.